and welcome to the Siebel CRM 22.2 update with the Siebel Hub. With the February release of Siebel CRM 2022, Oracle ships a solid set of bug fixes and documentation enhancements, but no new features. Alongside the bug fixes, which are listed as usual in the release notes document, we can identify some minor but still noteworthy changes. The LOV import service makes its first appearance in Siebel Bookshelf, so it's a good time to talk about the service in a bit more detail. The Set Attribute Application event can now be tracked with Usage Pattern Tracking UPT. In the next few minutes, we'll also discuss some throwback topics, touching releases prior to 22.2, .2, including the maximum message count for message broadcasts, and a new input argument for outbound REST proxy service methods. List of values, aka LOVs, have always played a critical role in Siebel CRM. A lot of business logic is driven by the inconspicuous 30 character strings. Just think of all the status fields, which are all over the business layer, or state models, or how often LOV based values are part of a workflow or script. With workspaces becoming mandatory in IP17, LOVs have become even more special. They are, at the time of this recording, the only non-repository entity which is managed by workspaces. This architectural peculiarity implies that developers create or modify LOVs in the development database and that editing of LOVs only takes place in the DR environment. Testers will test them in test environments, and production users will use them in production, but following the path of truth, no editing of LOVs is allowed in higher RR environments. This strict dev-to-test-slash-dev-to-prod pattern, which applies to LOVs as well as repository artifacts since IP17, presents several challenges. Many teams are used to or rely on modifying LOVs not just in development but also in higher test or production environments. The LOV import service is a business service that was introduced by Oracle in Siebel 19 to allow bulk import of LOV data into development, but also into test or production databases. The service, however, was not part of the standard repository until recently. Oracle provides instructions on My Oracle support to manually create the business service, along with its class and the integration object definitions. In late 2021, the LOV import service has been added to the master repository, so customers who conduct an upgrade from pre-IP17 versions to current releases will have it merged into their custom repository. The same is true for customers who run the non-mandatory repository upgrade utility, which can be used during an update from IP17 or higher. Independent of how the LOV import service materializes in your repository, once it's established, you can now follow the documentation in the REST API Guide 22.2 .2 or higher. It's worth noting that while documented as part of the REST API, the LOV import service is a regular business service and as such can be invoked not only via a REST call but by any known techniques to invoke a business service method. Let's take some time for a quick recap of the role of the LOV import service in development DR, and runtime RR, environments. In development environments, we have three options to create or edit list of values records. Entering them manually in the application, using the LOV import service, or using Enterprise Integration Manager (EIM). The choice of workspace, main or an integration workspace, is of course important and required. Now let's look at options for migrating LOVs from DR to RR environments. In the grander scheme of things, LOVs are to be migrated or deployed to RR environments with the help of the application workspace data service, which is part of the migration application. And this works perfectly fine unless customers deviate from the path of truth, which is strict dev to test 
slash dev to prod without any changes in environments other than development. As an alternative or supplement to the migration application, customers can deploy a list of values data using the LOV import service, EIM, or since 19.3, manual editing. Custom scripting of the EAI could replace the manual labor. If you want to learn more about LOV management in DR and RR environments, we highly recommend the video training module available on the Siebel Hub. This and many more on-demand, high-quality training modules are part of the always up-to-date Siebel 22 workshop. Follow the links in the description and start learning today. When you update or upgrade to Siebel CRM 22.2 .2 or higher, a new system preference is added into your database. This new system preference is named Enable RTE for Set Attribute. When set to false, which is the default value, the Set Attribute Runtime event will not be tracked by the Usage Pattern Service. If the system preference is set to true, and if the set attribute event is registered with the application and an action set calling the usage pattern service, UPT data will track the event. It can then be analyzed as part of the entire usage pattern data set captured in the UPT CSV files. The Siebel CRM update process is cumulative, so if you update or upgrade to Siebel CRM 22.2, you get everything that's included in 22.2 .2 and previous releases. This is true as well for the addition of a new field in the user preferences business component. This field, maximum message count for message broadcasting, is available since 21.8. It can be used to limit the amount of broadcast messages, aka notifications, that are processed within a user session. Manual configuration steps, such as adding the field to the business component and exposing it in an applet, were required to use this field in previous releases before it was added to the standard repository in 22.1. As such, customers upgrading from pre-IP17 to 22.2 .2 and later will not have to add the field manually. The same is true for customers applying the 22.2 .2 or later update if they choose to run the non-mandatory repository upgrade utility. The final throwback topic for today is a new input argument for outbound REST proxy business service methods. It goes by the name of Siebel Higher Input, Siebel Hierarchy Input. When added to an outbound REST proxy method invocation with a value of Y, yes or true, the proxy service will interpret the hierarchical input as an integration object instance, which we often refer to as Siebel message. We can find a standard use case for this input argument in the new standard workflow processes that are part of the Oracle CrowdTwist integration for Siebel loyalty, which have been introduced with the 22.1 update. These workflows demonstrate that a data flow between Siebel CRM and external REST APIs can be achieved by simply using standard EAI business services such as EAI Siebel Adapter and Data Mapper. The output of these services is an integration object instance. In versions prior to 21.1, developers had to use custom scripting to massage the OI instance so that the proxy could process it. With 22.1 and higher, the Siebel Higher Input argument is fully functional and allows developers to create integration flows without the need for custom scripting. Let's review the mandatory and optional steps for a successful update to Siebel CRM 22.1 or higher. First, it's highly recommended to take a backup of the entire environment and the database that you're intending to update. Then the Modular Deployment Engine, MDE, needs to be executed, as has been the case with all releases since the inauguration of the MDE in 21.2. The MDE provides the binary update. 
There's a wider version gap. You'll also get a topology update to the unified directory structure. This applies to any enterprise server component such as AI, Siebel Server, or Gateway. It's mandatory to run the post-install database update, which can be run automatically as part of the MDE or manually after the MDE is finished copying the binaries. This has to be executed once per database and import schema changes, seed data, and open UI manifest data into the target database. Make sure to verify the report and the log files and rerun in case of errors before you continue. There are also optional steps which might or might not be applicable to your situation. The repository upgrade utility is optional and it can be run only against a development database. It should be run only if you intend to uptake the so called non mandatory changes made by Oracle such as the recent CrowdTwist integration. The result is an integration workspace that contains the non-mandatory repository artifacts. Developers can then inspect and test the Oracle manufactured objects and subsequently deliver them into the main branch or another integration branch. The release notes contains configuration constructions which you might have to apply in your development environment if necessary. There are known issues reported in the release notes as well, so make sure you understand and apply the workarounds if necessary. And finally, there's a bunch of non-repository administrative changes which you might have to take care of. The complete update process with all required and optional steps in gray and green respectively is depicted on the diagram. Here we can see the update process for development environments where the fast track to a successful update is as follows. Take a backup, run the MDE, run the post installed database update. If you have no repository upgrades, configuration instructions or administrative changes to implement, you're done. If you need to execute the non mandatory repository upgrade or apply configuration instructions, you have to do that in the development environment and test and deliver these changes. If you have any administrative changes on your to-do list, you have to implement them as well before declaring success. The same is true for test or production, also known as RR environments, where the update process is a little shorter. The mandatory steps are the same. Back up your environment, run MDE, run post-install database update. If there's nothing else to do, you're done. Of course, you have to repeat the update process on every Siebel instance. If the DR update included repository changes, you have to use the migration application to deploy the new and updated artifacts from the development environment to the runtime environment. Similar to the DR environment, you might have some administrative changes on your checklist that you need to execute before declaring the update complete. Let's take a look at the path for an upgrade from a version prior to Innovation Pack 17 to the latest and greatest release. If your current Siebel CRM version is below IP17, you find yourself in the lower portion of the diagram. This means that you have to conduct an upgrade project to get to Siebel 22.1 or higher. The duration of a Siebel CRM upgrade project is measured in person months, sometimes person years. The project complexity and duration are tightly coupled to the number of customizations you have applied over the years and also to the age of your Siebel application. In a nutshell, the more time and money was spent on customizing Siebel, the more time and money will have to be spent on the upgrade. If you come from a very old Siebel release, such as Siebel 7.5, you have to execute a two-step upgrade. One-step upgrades are supported from 7.8 up to 8.2. Upgrades from these ancient releases also require a migration from the ActiveX driven high interactivity client to Siebel OpenUI. If you're on a younger version, such as Innovation Pack 13 to 16, you're on the incremental repository merge IRM track, which is still a lengthy process but much more streamlined. You might not even have to migrate to OpenUI as you're already using it. Upgrade projects are conducted using the latest Siebel CRM update available at the time you start the project. The upgrade path is direct from any version prior to IP17 
to 22.1 and higher. If you already ran a successful Siebel upgrade to IP17 or higher, you might be on any version between IP17, Siebel 18, 19, 20, or 21. To get from there to the latest update, you execute the aforementioned update process. The real benefit of the continuous release model is evident here, as the update process will at most take a few person days.